Our priority is to have black, brown, and woman-led businesses sure. on our shelves. There's just not enough, right? People told me that this industry was for white people, that uh, as a black person, that this, I was opening myself up for being arrested, that I was never going to be able to get investment. I was out pitching. I needed a lead investor. Whitney Beatty recently received an investment of just under half a million dollars from a fund launched by Jay-Z and a group of cannabis companies who together are called the parent company. The fund will have an initial investment of $10 million. You've been pushing the boulder uphill for so long and finally someone has come to push it with you. Not just someone. It's like Jay-Z has come to push it with you of all the people in the world. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal earlier this year, Jay-Z said he was motivated by an imbalance in the marijuana industry. Statistics show that while black people were nearly four times more likely than whites to be arrested for marijuana possession, they make up only a small number of those profiting from the multi-billion dollar legalized pot industry. It's happening for a number of reasons, and a lot of them are financial. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Just, I, uh, this one million five, two million to open a dispensary in the LA area. I can't go to the SBA and ask for a loan. You can't go to Bank of America or Wells Fargo and ask for a business loan because this is still federally illegal. And you're stuck in a space where you need to raise money from VCs or from angel investors. People of color uh, generally don't have a lot of angel investors within their networks. Beatty hopes the investment from the Jay-Z fund will help her meet her goal of opening a dispensary in the highly competitive Los Angeles market by September. So they'll come in and you'll have signage, you'll have kiosks. My 401k does not exist. All in, the chips are here. If this doesn't happen, I, I don't even want to think about what happens if this doesn't happen. So are we still looking at um, uh, beginning of August? Beginning of August? And then a hero comes along. States and municipalities have also tried to help minority representation in the industry through social equity programs that reserve cannabis licenses for those groups. If we're specifically talking about uh, equity and licensing, uh, then I, I would describe that program as an effort to reduce barriers to entering the legal cannabis market for communities who have been historically criminalized by cannabis. Cat Packer oversees LA's cannabis regulations and licensing. A lot of the feedback today that we receive is just that the process takes too long uh, and that uh, the delays are extremely costly to social equity applicants. Yeah. This is the first time I've seen a t-shirt with JB on it. Right. Um, so. Beatty was one of those applicants. She first applied for her dispensary license in 2019. Soon after qualifying, she struck a deal with a venture capital firm. I went in for a meeting in February and I asked them about their cash viability and they said, we have the money. And two weeks later, they said, we're closing. And it's over. The legal cannabis industry was much different when Wanda James and her husband opened their first dispensary in Colorado. When we opened up our dispensary in 2009, there were no social equity programs. So people were looking for concentration. The cost to open up a dispensary was the cost of your lease. So our first dispensary, including our grow facility, probably cost us in the ballpark of about $200,000. We wanted to be able to use the dispensary to talk about mass incarceration. My brother's crime was four ounces of weed and that four ounces of weed cost him 10 years of his life in the legal system. James has worked as a consultant, helping several states and municipalities create cannabis social equity policies. If you're one of the very fortunate people to be able to get a license, hopefully the social equity program allows for some type of funding from the state. The reality is, is that uh, while we are uh, dispersing six million dollars amongst uh, potentially hundreds of different applicants. Our applicants are going to be competing with businesses who alone have multi-million dollar budget. The issue that we see right now with social equity across the United States is we have yet to see any social equity program work. 
That's where funds like Jay-Z's come in. Data shows that between 2013 to 2017, only 1% of U.S. startup founders that received venture capital were Black. The money Beatty received has kept her on track so far. You got gorgeous, didn't you? Isn't it beautiful? You got so but she still needs to finish construction and purchase inventory like edibles from LA's Madame Munchie. What are your men's? What are your minimums? Um, we don't really have them with this distro company, um, especially since you're here in LA. Like, I don't think we'll have a problem, you know, with whatever order size you're going to want to start with. We've got full out demolition going right now. We are in the middle of a full build of our space that has been covered completely by this part of the investment. We are moving forward on you know, all cylinders because of this. Anytime there is money out there to be had, I encourage all entrepreneurs to always go after every dollar that's out there. But let's be real of what the real effectiveness of those funds are. Beatty needs to raise over $300,000 more. It's unclear whether she'll be able to open her doors to start sales by her projected September launch date. I'm always about, my bottom line comes down to the cash. <laughs> There's never enough money. There's never enough money. I have been waiting for my license since September 3rd, 2019. I've been losing money for 22 months now. We have a 10 head embroidery machine of which we just did the hats. There's no room for failure here. There really isn't. We are eight weeks from greatness or eight weeks from disaster. 